How's it going everyone? This is Samir and welcome to another PSR video. This one uh, is long overdue because it's been a little over a year since the last video uh, we released. And so I just wanna dive right into it. Uh, I just wanna apologize ahead of time for the uh, poor video quality. There's a lot of wind. Uh, it was cold, I was shivering a little bit, I lost my steady cam for my camera, uh, it's gloomy, etc. You're thinking, what are you doing recording in such terrible conditions? Well, I got sick of not making videos, I got sick of waiting for true spring to get here, even though it's early April, it's still not really feeling like spring, so I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and post commentate this one, which of course I don't prefer, but here we are. So let's get into it, shall we? So here we've got my brand new 2021 Toyota Camry TRD, my first and only brand new car that I purchased. And before you panic, <clears throat> I have not gotten rid of the Civic. I still own it. Uh, it's never going away. <laughs> and you know that'll be a topic for another video, my future plans for the Civic. But it's essentially retiring from being my daily driver and being replaced uh, by the TRD. So there you go. Um, you're probably wondering, uh, some of you might have never even heard of the Camry TRD. You might be wondering what makes it special. So before we get into that, I just want to make a quick note. The car is stock, and it's pretty much staying fully stock, uh, aside from two modifications. One, as you can see, I've tinted the windows 20% all around, minus the windshield. And the other one, which you probably can't notice, is uh, the full front end PPF kit. So we've got paint protection film on the you know the bumper full hood full fenders mirrors uh it's pretty much invisible that's uh that's part of the reason why i didn't go with the half kit i went full uh full length of the hood and the fenders but otherwise it's stock it's staying stock i just want it to be my daily i i know <laughs> i'm a car enthusiast how can i keep anything stock it's gonna be a tough <laughs> it's gonna be a tough thing to handle but i think it'll be all right i'm gonna get my fix by modifying the civic further but anyway, back to the car. Um, pretty much at the end of the day, it's just a Camry. Sure, it's it's sportier looking. Uh, it has you know it has a sportier feel, but really it's just a solid <laughs> uh, family car. That's really what it is. There's no getting around that. At least not from factory. You of course you can make it much more on your own. But anyway, as you can see, it's got you know full aero kit, front lip splitter, you know side skirt extensions, a rear diffuser. It also has what they call a pedestal. Spoiler, that's probably the most controversial part of the car, but frankly, I love it. I understand why someone would not, and I've known people, you know, a couple of people who've taken theirs off and, re you know, replaced their trunks with just standard Camry trunks with, you know, like a lip spoiler, and that's totally fine. I totally get that. Uh, it also has red accenting everywhere, you know, on the outside and even more so on the inside. <laughs> I mean, it has red seat belts, red inserts uh, on the seats, red stitching everywhere, you know, <clears throat> uh, pinstriping on the outside, red brake calipers. Uh, performance wise though it has the same 3.5 liter v6 as other camrys come with uh, so that means it pretty much has the same power figures 301 horsepower 267 pound feet of torque it has a trd exhaust system which sounds good uh, but it actually adds no power uh, in fact here's a couple of clips just to show you what it sounds like So yes, no power gains over a standard V6 Camry. However, it comes with a slew of handling upgrades. It's not just, you know, some badging and some, you know, sporty looking stuff. Of course, you can, you know, I'm pretty sure Toyota claims that, you know, the aero parts actually are functional, and I don't doubt that. It's just that, you know, for someone like me, who's just using it as a daily driver, I'm never gonna see those gains, really, ever. Uh, but these other gains, I do actually see day to day. So I think they're more, uh, it's more relevant to place these in kind of the performance category. So what does it got? It has lighter 19 by 8.5 inch matte black TRD wheels. Now these aren't necessarily TRD specific. Of course they come standard on the TRD, but you can get them optionally on like the XSE and XLE, I believe. I mean, I'm sure if you just go to your dealership, you can just be like, hey, I want the TRD wheels and they'll give them to you. So it's not like it's really <clears throat> uh, limited to certain trim levels. It's also got larger front brake rotors than a standard Camry with dual piston calipers up front. Uh, compare that to, 
you know, I think the standard ones are about an inch smaller in diameter on the rotors, and I'm pretty sure they're just single piston calipers up front. We also got TRD specifically tuned lowering springs, lower the car a little over half an inch, shocks and stabilizer bars, so it's a stiffer ride, but honestly, it still feels like a Camry. Honestly, it feels more like a, an, a like a newer Honda Accord, if you've ever driven one of those. It doesn't feel as soft as like a standard Camry. I've always felt that Camrys ride softer than Accords do. This makes it pretty much like an Accord. It also comes with thicker underbody braces and rear seat V bracing. So the latter upgrade actually gets rid of the rear uh, seat folding option. You, you can't fold your rear seats down, which is a little funny. I feel like that maybe was a little overkill in a family car. Um, you also don't get a sunroof of any kind or a moonroof, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, for claimed rigidity. Of course, these are also cost-saving measures. The TRD is actually the cheapest, uh, has the cheapest MSRP of all uh, uh, Camry V6 models. So that's very interesting. Now I guess I want to get into why I specifically chose this car. Now, a lot of research went into selecting a car, a lot of thought, a lot of time, and I could easily make an extensive like half hour video just discussing the many factors that I considered as well as the factors that were you know, a necessity uh, for a car to satisfy for, uh, for me. But I'm just gonna try to keep it simple here, just nice, quick, and easy. So pretty much, first and foremost, I just wanted a great daily driver. And that means something different to a lot of people. I mean, people, some people really like very, very loud daily drivers. Some people would call my Civic a perfect daily driver. I wouldn't. And so that gives you a sense of, uh, you know, what I actually think should go into a daily driver. And I'll, I guess, enumerate some things on that list now. Uh, pretty much at least decent fuel economy. Uh, that varies depending on the size of the vehicle. For the, you know, the Camry, I, the way I drive, I get about an average of 27, 27 and a half. Uh, and then on the highway, you know, <clears throat> on a road trip, I easily get 31 miles a gallon. So that's more than enough for me. Uh, I need good cargo and passenger space. I don't want passengers in the back to, to struggle. I want it to be comfortable for them as if they were in the front. That's important to me. Um, you know, <clears throat> space for, you know, cargo, luggage, whatever I'm, whatever I'm lugging around, uh, for trips, etc. I want a comfortable ride, you know, not anything too stiff. I also don't want too much engine or road noise. I want a high safety rating, of course, and most importantly, reliability. Now, of course, you can't really call any brand new car reliable per se, but the Toyota and Camry nameplates obviously carry a huge reputation of dependability. The chances of this Camry not being reliable is pretty low. I mean, I'd say less than a 5% chance. If anything does go wrong, it'll probably be electronic and uh, you know, not drivetrain related. So those are the kind of the most basic factors. In addition, I wanted some sporty flair and whatever the car was. What that meant for me was, you know, decent power, AKA, you know, 300 horsepower in a midsize sedan or 200 plus horsepower in a compact car, kind of like a Honda Civic Si, um, and a sporty slash aggressive design. I'm very loose with those terms. I mean, now obviously the Camry is aggressive for a Camry, but it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not a you know, supercar looking uh, aggressive. You know what I mean? And anyway, I was by no means looking for a sports car. I want that clear. That's why, you know, I didn't, you know, get a Civic Type R or a Subaru WRX STI. I, I wanted something that satisfied all the needs I previously listed with just like a hint of sporty flair. The final factors which kind of sealed the deal for the Camry um, include its likely low maintenance cost. That goes back to reliability. Its value for money being, you know, having an MSRP of around 34 and a half thousand and I got a significant discount and a low APR rate. So, and the other factor that really sealed the deal for the Camry, I think, I mean, I, I don't mean to place too much importance on this because I'm really not that much of a snob. You know, I am an attorney, but I'm not, I don't like to think of myself as too much of a snob. I just think this is really cool. The fact that this car is so unique. Part of the reason why some of you may have never seen one or, or heard of them, well, that's a marketing issue <laughs> by Toyota, but also Toyota's only built 12,000 of these including you know, all colors between 2020 and 2021 models, 6,000 for each model year. Yeah, it's not rare by any means. It's not like a limited production of 500 or 1,000 or whatever, but at the very least, it's uncommon, and that's really cool. Anyway, guys, uh, again, I apologize for the lower video quality. Um, hopefully, you know, the, the weather improves swiftly so I can get back to making higher quality videos with live commentary and just, you know, showing you my face a little bit more. I, I I fully enjoy doing those types of videos more so anyway. But I can't wait to share more of this car with you all. 
please let me know what you think of the TRD. Uh, and if you feel so inclined, let me know what you would have purchased instead of the TRD. Uh, what you think could have been a better option for me even, you know, considering all the factors I kind of laid out in here. But anyway, thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this video, it doesn't end up being too long. I have a problem with trying to make short videos that end up being long, but I think I reached my goal of making a short video today. See you all around.